Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. I'm so glad you could join me here today. Today is episode 1600. So again, it's just another day on the Cabral Concept. We're just moving right along. 1600, you know, may as well have been episode 800 or 400 or 200 before that because our mission is far from over. So there'll be no slowing down. Every single day, I want to bring you one more topic that I believe will help you move forward on your path to greater wellness, transforming your body, working on anti-aging, helping those and caring for those around you. So what I decided to do, since it is episode 1600, and I guess there is a little bit of nostalgia as you hit 1600 episodes or around there, what I want to do is I want to go back. Just about a month ago was the two-year anniversary of my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. Now, many of you have read that book, purchased the book, and shared it with others, which I'm extremely grateful for. But that book two years ago was essentially five or six years in the making, meaning I actually had started writing that in 2012. So that would be six years before that. Yeah, even before that, I remember that. 2011, for sure. I was overseas. I was in Europe. The name of the book was actually, I think it was called Alive and Well instead of The Rain Barrel Effect. But I wanted to really denote in that book what it was all about. And that's what I want to share with you today because, again, it feels like just yesterday I published the book. Uh, Again, just last May was the two-year anniversary, last month or so. And that book essentially outlines exactly how I've been helping people now in a functional medicine capacity as a doctor of naturopathy, as an integrative health practitioner who rolls in seven main disciplines into one for the past 10 years. And a big part of that is something that I learned overseas. Now, people always ask, was there any secrets you learned overseas? And and there's not a lot. I mean, the, the biggest secret of all was that every form of medicine works. Because I studied in China, I studied in India, Sri Lanka, all over Europe, and the United States. And I studied bioregulatory medicine, traditional naturopathy, naturopathic medicine, functional medicine. I studied traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurveda, of course, orthomolecular medicine, you name it. But what I realized was that they all hold extreme value. I mean, conventional medicine holds extreme value too in acute-based medical circumstances. So uh, one thing I realized is that, you know, no one form of medicine is ever going to heal anyone. You know, it just, if you get lucky, okay, that form helps you, such as being able to use acupuncture, be able to use chiropractic, being able to use muscular therapy, to be able to use PT, then looking at herbs and et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I could just go around and around, vitamins. So there was a few secrets. There's no doubt about it. And of course, I shared those with you in the rain barrel effect. It's not like I hold anything back. I mean, I share what they don't teach in the U.S. from what I learned overseas. And that's why I'm so glad I was able to do that at all these different clinics at what I'm just, again, just fortunate not enough to be, it was in the right place, the right time. I was doing internships at the right time and, and just studied with so many amazing people. And I wrote about that. But, you know, if I had to pick one thing that especially... 10 years ago or so was not known about, and that is a subtractive-based process. So when I try to teach people, I say, listen, I mean, biohacking community is great. I'm into technology, gadgets, all that, but it's not always about adding more. So one of the biggest things that I learned is this, is that more and adding more is not the answer. It's much of the reason why we are where we are today. Because for the most part, we live in societies. I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, you most likely are doing okay. Maybe you're not doing great. 
There's a lot of people who are not well listening to this podcast. There's a lot of people in any of those big five areas of their life that I talk about on the Motivation and Mindset Mondays. Could be career, spirituality, relationships, their health or their body. Something may not be where it should be, but you are at least fortunate enough and there's enough then to be able to give gratitude for that you're able to listen to a podcast like this one or one of my colleagues or being able to pick up a book or being able to read articles, whatever it might be, because it's at least leading you forward with some information that should give you hope because if there's one other person out there like you that was able to heal, so should you. I really believe that. And that was, you know, something that kept me going for 10 years. I didn't know if I was ever going to get well, but I said, other people have gotten well. How can I not get well? Other people have done it. I'm just, I haven't figured it out yet. I haven't found my answer. I haven't been patient enough, whatever it might be. And again, I found my answers. It's never typically just one. There's no usual silver bullet, but I'll tell you this. The way that I eventually got rid of my gut-based issues, allergies, adrenal, like all sorts of different issues that I dealt with is through a subtractive-based process. So when I talk with people about that, I really feel that light bulbs start to go off because they realize their goal has always been to add more. It's like, okay, more workouts, more dieting, you know, more gadgets, more of everything. When oftentimes we need to quiet the body, quiet the digestive system, quiet the mind, and remove. Again, it's one of those few secrets, there was a handful, that I did learn overseas. And again, I don't keep them secret, neither does anyone overseas. They share them with people, it's just in the U.S. and a lot of Western-based societies, Australia, Europe, U.K., U.S., Canada, etc. It's just that we don't want to hear them, like we don't. But Ayurvedic medicine in particular is very much focused on the subtractive rather than the additive process. Now, what does that mean? It means that we would take uh, patients through in India, Panchakama. And the Panchakama would be our five healing-based modalities. If you don't know what Panchakama is, you can just go to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, type in Panchakama, P-A-N-C-H-A-K-A-R-M-A, and you're able to find out what that's all about. But essentially, it is a giant detoxification process through manual-based therapies and a specialty diet that went along with that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that was my first intro into the selective and I should say subtractive based process. But then, you know, I was going deep in traditional naturopathy and I was going deep into bioregulatory medicine. I mean, two of my favorite, they're all my favorite. Honestly, they're all my favorite. They really are. I love them all. And that's why we've rolled them all up into our Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. But the truth is this, is that all of them started to go into how can we help this person heal? And yes, vitamins are used. Yes, herbs are used. Yes, healing foods are used, but actually selectively and for the right targeted reason. And I want to give you some examples of those towards the end of the show. I'm going to give you three. Like it's if I could only use three from a subtractive based process, what would I do for you? And I'm going to try to make them as absolutely low cost as possible so that everybody can benefit from this. I know there's a cost to lab testing. I know there's a cost to nutritional supplements, to the daily foundation protocol, et cetera, et cetera. But let's think about it this way. What can you do? What are you able to do so that we're not making excuses that we're never holding ourselves back from our best life? So that's what I want to give you today. But before I do that, I just I want to give you just a little gift today. Even if you haven't read The Rain Barrel Effect, what I would love for you to be able to do is actually take that Rain Barrel Effect quiz. I want to see what your total body burden is, also referred to as your total toxic load. Now, a lot of people, again, I'm not going to go through liver detoxification, how it works today. There's many podcasts on that. I even put together a a two-hour course for you on people that want to go deep on this. And you can go to that course just by going to equilibriumnutrition.com forward slash detox dash course. It's all education. You'll learn exactly how the detoxification process works. You'll also learn why you can't just detox through fasting, through juices, and through other things like that. They're, all, they're great, don't, no doubt about it, but you'll learn a deeper process of what your liver needs in order to truly be able to do its job. So bottom line is, let's give you that quiz today, and then I'm going to give you my top three detox-based modalities that if I can only pick three and they were low cost, what would I do? 
And then I'll be putting something together, hopefully later this year as well, that I think that you'll absolutely be able to benefit from uh, as well. Kind of an addendum workbook to the rain barrel effect. But again, we'll talk about that in just a moment. A lot of follow-up shows here today too for people if this is kind of their first interlude into the show, into detoxification of why it really is a game changer. Remember, I stood up at a conference about how it was 2015 going into 2016. Yeah, it was 2016 because I had just come out with um, the functional medicine detox. And this was a big crowd. And essentially, they were just asking me, if you could do one thing, what would it be? And I said, well, I put together this functional medicine detox. And the reason I did that is that most people can get about 80% of the results they're looking for in just this specific detox for a limited investment and be able to then learn from the process and carry it on. That's why I created it. Because the, the fringe benefits around it are absolutely amazing. Okay, so let's bring you right now to the quiz. The quiz was originally uploaded for you on episode 846. So if you want to check that out, it's called Find Out Your Total Toxic Load. You can go to stephencabral.com forward slash 846. Super simple. But today's show, where I'm going to put all of the different links for you, is going to be at stephencabral.com forward slash one six zero zero. You may have guessed that already. Okay, so let's pull up that quiz for you right now. You're able to print it out. You can take the quiz as many times as you would like. And we're going to be eventually building a digital version of this so that you can take it anytime you'd like. All right, see if these symptoms sound familiar. I want you to rate them as a zero, which means you never feel the symptom at all. A one, you feel this once or twice a month, not too noticeable. Two, if you feel the symptom once a week or weekly. And listed three, if you feel the symptom daily. Okay? So I took a quiz not dissimilar to this many, many years ago. Again, remember, I had debilitating immune imbalances. I mean, absolutely debilitating, and it was causing mass inflammation in my body. So everything was wrong with my body. People ask, like, well, how is everything wrong? Headaches, fibromyalgia, joint pain, rheumatoid arthritis, Addison's disease, blood sugar dysregulation with type 2 diabetes, POTS, etc. Well, when you have massive systemic inflammation, everything is affected. Your body's not so separate that inflammation can't go to all different parts of your body. And my total toxic load was enormous, a 100 plus. Let's see what you get, all right? So do you get any headaches or migraines, dizziness or faintness, neck tension, or a cloudy head, like brain fog? Okay, so that's under the head category. Again, follow right along. You just head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 1600 or stephencabral.com forward slash 846. And you can just print out this rain barrel effect quiz or simply just open it up and follow along. In your sinuses, put a zero, a one, a two, or a three for this. Any nasal congestion or a stuffy nose. Any allergy. Any allergies, seasonal or daily. Any mucus, sneezing, or nose blowing. Well, you're constantly blowing your nose on a daily basis. All right. How about your eyes? Dark circles under the eyes? Although, yes, some of that is genetic. The lighter skin, the darker veins, etc. But any dark circles under the eyes because it can be attributed to other factors such as digestion, allergies. I'll be doing a whole show on that as well. How about bags under the eyes? Meaning puffiness under the eyes. Any itchy eyes? Discharge or watery eyes? Blurred vision? Or crusted eyes upon waking? Next up would be ears. Do you have itchy ears, discharge or drainage from your ears, like a buildup in your ears of wax, etc. Ringing in the ears or tinnitus, excessive wax buildup, blocked or muffled hearing. Again, follow along right now. If you're saying, even if you're in your car listening to this, you could just be saying no, 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 yes, or hopefully you're saying no to most of these, right? Any pain in gums or teeth? We're talking about the teeth and mouth now, or just teeth, I should say. Any bleeding gums? Any silver fillings? If you have silver fillings, go ahead and put that down as a three. That's because you're being exposed to that metal, such as mercury, every single day. How about metal crowns or root canals? Score that as a three as well. All right, let's move on to the mouth. Any canker sores? Any cold sores, such as the herpes virus? Any cracking on the lips or outside corners of the mouth? Any discolored lips? And a white film on lips upon waking or eating? I even did a whole show on this on what your lips... Or if your lips could talk, what they say about your health. You can check that out as well. All right, your tongue. Red dots on the tongue. 
Sides of the tongue have dents. We call that scalloping in Ayurvedic medicine. Any white, yellow, or brown coating on the tongue. Cracks or lines on the tongue. Swollen lymph nodes in the neck. Oh, this is now glands. Swollen lymph nodes, the neck, the armpits, or the groin. Again, I used to have chronically swollen glands. They never went down. The glands in my neck, armpits, groin, they never went down. They were always the size of a golf ball. And doctors, again, had no idea what to make of me. But for a half a decade or more, I had swollen glands. Difficulty swallowing. Loss of voice. Swollen ankles, wrists, hands, or fingers. How about your breathing? What's that look like? Any chest tension? Inability to get enough air in? Chest congestion? Chronic cough? Clear throat a lot? Or voice hoarseness? In terms of your weight, any difficulty losing weight? Gaining weight easily? Feel swollen or puffy? Retaining water? Binge or compulsive eating? How about your joints and muscles? Any pain in the joints? Muscle stiffness? Limited range of motion? Muscle weakness or loss of strength? Or arthritis? Your skin? Do you have any acne? Hair loss? Flushing or hot flashes? Dry flaking skin? Excessive sweating? Hives or itchiness? Psoriasis, eczema, ringworm, or skin rashes? In terms of your sleep, do you have an inability to fall asleep? Can't stay asleep, waking up frequently? Do you have nightmares? Is your heart racing at night? Do you have night sweats? In terms of your energy, are you tired upon waking? Any daytime or afternoon fatigue? General lack of energy? Apathy? Lack of ambition or drive? Hyperactivity, which means you can't sit still, you always have to be doing something? Restlessness? You feel uncomfortable with quiet? Tap your feet or shake your legs or hands when seated? Do you have a decreased libido or sexual function? Your digestion. Do you get tired after meals? Especially lunch. Are you bloated? Do you have gas? Any belching or burping? Do you have diarrhea or constipation? Stomach or intestinal pain? Nausea or vomiting? Does your stomach stick out more as the day progresses? What about your mind? Is there a lack of concentration? Easily distracted or lose your train of thought? Difficulty making decisions? Any brain fog, stuttering or difficulty putting together sentences, uncoordinated or dropping things, ADD, ADHD, or learning disabilities. How about emotions? Any anxiety, overwhelm, irritability, anger or rage, dark thoughts, sad for no reason, mood swings, depressed, high strung, or seasonal affective disorder. Now again, many of these you might consider a disease-based state. You may not consider this a total body burden, but the truth is this that most of us weren't born with these issues. Most of us, they gradually came on as we became a little bit older as a child or as a teenager or into an adulthood. So what I want you to look at is that if you filled up your rain barrel gradually over time, it also can be emptied. And we call that emptying the rain barrel. It is one of the cornerstones of our practice. And again, as I said, I've been extremely fortunate to be able to find these things out. And that is why we have been very successful at helping people all around the world be able to rebalance their underlying root causes. And much of this is due to a subtractive process. Yes, it's using targeted modalities and protocols, but it truly is because we are helping people empty their rain barrel. Emotionally, physically, all of the above, right? Mental health, emotional health, physical health, etc. So what I want you to do is when you get a chance to take this test is I want you to score yourself. And there's one more category for immunity. And you want to score it with 10 points if you answer yes, because they're so important. Do you get more than two to three illnesses a year? Do you have environmental-based allergies? Do you have pneumonia? Or have you gotten pneumonia within the last 12 months? Do you have a diagnosed disease? Do you have an unexplained illness that you're living with? Any of those would be labeled a 10 because right away I want to put you just in a separate category and that's stage two. So in stage one, it's zero to nine points. You're doing great. That is where we want every single person. I'm now finally in that zero to nine stage and I'm so grateful for that. And the way that I finally got there, because I was well, like I got well, it took me a long time, don't get me wrong, but I got well. 
but I wasn't in the zero to nine points. Like I wasn't great. I was still dealing with seasonal allergies. I was still dealing with some low level like asthma based issues, breathing and some low level energy issues and a little bit with sleep as well. Finally got there, right? Finally got there. That's where you want to be. And again, you can fill out this quiz to find out in the 10 to 19 point range. You're doing great. You really are. You're doing well. But we still need to then do a little bit more detoxification, a little bit more figuring out what the underlying root causes are and certainly emptying that rain barrel. And I'll give you that in just one moment. If you have 20 points or more, this is the time, in my opinion, to start getting really serious about your health. Because I have never seen anyone just get better on their own. Meaning like it just doesn't happen. You don't just all of a sudden start to empty your rain barrel and shift back. Now, you could absolutely get that way just through healthy lifestyle behaviors and not even know you're doing it, right? That happens to people. The truth is, 20 years ago, I was helping people get well unknowingly using the de-stress protocol from the Rain Barrel Effect book just by giving them proper nutrition plans. I was helping them with their anti-inflammatory food choices. I was giving them exercise protocols. I was talking about sleep. I was talking about stress. I didn't know that that's what I was doing, but that's why some people can heal without even necessarily going through the specific stages of saying like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. They start to adopt a healthier lifestyle. And that's really what it's all about. But if you fall into the 20 plus category of points, what I need you to do is really begin to get serious about your health. Because in almost all cases, it just doesn't get better. And I want you to heal. So what we need to do is start to really take this seriously. So here are the three main things that I would do. Again, I mean, there's so many things that I want to create, right? So there's only, there's only so many hours in the day. But here's what I want to do. I really want to create an addendum to the rain barrel effect. And, or, or I should say more like a workbook, but we'll call it an addendum. And I want to list about a dozen different things that I would do just to make it, you know, that 400 page book, which believe me, I mean, again, it outlines exactly how we practice and I would love you to read it. And if you've already read it, I would love you to review it on Amazon if you haven't already. It's the two year anniversary. If you've read the book, I would love you to review hopefully five stars, but if not, that's okay. And, um, you know, I just really appreciate that. I love being able to spread this information. That's what the podcast is all about. And the book is one place to find essentially all of that information. And do keep in mind, 100% of all profits go to charity. I do not keep any of the profit from the sale of that book. 100% goes to charity. Okay. So here's what I would do. The number one is this, and, and most of you know this by now, but it's, it's appropriate that it just happened to land this week, is that I am doing my quarterly detox right now. So if people want to ask me, like, how did you push yourself over that edge to finally take that last step to healing at those underlying root cause imbalances? I started a detox. This was about eight years ago now, and I truly believe it is why I now am in the best health of my life. I have more energy than I've ever had in my life. Forget about being a kid. Forget about being a teenager. I have more energy now. I have more ambition now. I have more drive now. Uh, and it's, the, it's what I want everybody to have. This is what I believe it was. It didn't happen overnight. Every 12 weeks, I do a functional medicine detox. My first one was a 21 day. After that, they've been seven days. I will oftentimes do a 21 day once a year. You know what? I don't want to go through it because this is one podcast today. I've talked about it many times. You can get all the free information you need just even at the detox course. You can go to equilibriumnutrition.com forward slash detox dash course. Just 100% information. Okay, that's it. 100% information. And so functional medicine detox every 12 weeks. We do one in January. We do one the first week of April. We do one the first week of July or last week of June, which we're doing this year, right before the 4th of July here in the US. And then we do one in September. Those are our quarterly detoxes. That's what I learned from every form of medicine except conventional medicine. Every form of medicine did a seasonal cleanse or a detox of some type. That was the game changer for me, for me especially in that seasonal allergy issue in the springtime. Again, I'm not giving you a treatment protocol. We're not curing disease, any of those things. We're staying within our guidelines, but that was it. That was the game changer for me. Okay, so 
We have this part, the functional medicine detox, seven days, hands down. And then you try to carry as much over as you can, doing a smoothie every morning, eating three meals rather than five a day, like all of these different things that I've talked about on the show before. The second one is this though. The second one is sweating. And this might seem strange, but think about this. For most people, when's the last time you sweat? Like really sweat. Enough sweat that you would sweat through a t-shirt. Think about that. I'm being really serious. Because when I ask most people, it's been a long time. It's been a long time since they totally sweat through their t-shirt. Now, what does that mean? Well, you have to understand is that your skin is the largest excretory organ in the body, which means it is the easiest way to get rid of waste and toxins through your skin. Clinical-based medicine has tested what comes out when people do a sauna. We're talking about heavy metals. We're talking about viruses being killed. We're talking about mold being excreted through the skin. It is well worth it to get a good sweat on most days a week. Through exercise, through use of a sauna, whatever works for you. But I'm telling you right now, it's one of those big things that we did in Ayurveda as well and during Pachacama. We used sweat boxes. They were literally wood boxes that we would use uh, essentially a steam to it. And then people all also laid in the sun, not to get a sunburn, but they sweat that way as well. And that was a huge part of it. Every day, people sweat. Every single day. All right. I, and I know this is a bridge version of it, but the last one is this, and this is extremely important as well, and that's fasting. And it is one of those things that, fortunately, we've been beginning to implement. Now, of course, in the Western-based culture, we take things way too far. We really do. But a fast, I, I won't go through all of them today, but there's many ways to fast. I recommend that most people, not every single person in the world, but most people fast 12 hours to about 14 hours overnight every single night. A few hours before bed, three to four hours before bed, don't eat. And then about an hour or two after waking, you can have your breakfast. Simple easy. Again, you can get more detailed than that. If you want to read about my one day diet, you can absolutely look at that. Sorry, the one day reset diet. If you want to look into fasting on a one nightly and then weekly and then quarterly and then yearly basis, you can check out my show on that. What we'll try to do is link everything up today at stephencabral.com forward slash one six zero zero. Just wanted to say how grateful I am, how thankful I am for this community, for your support. We're reaching about a million downloads per month on the show. I never thought that that could happen, but thanks to you, it is. And also on Amazon for the rain barrel effect. If you haven't left a review yet, I would love it. If you could do that right now, it'll take you about 10 seconds or so. Thanks so much. Take care. And of course, if this show is helpful, please do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp parts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources. Resources.